On February 28, 1765, the community of Soissons, located northeast of Paris, would suddenly turn from a peaceful village into a bloody hunting ground. The carnage that would cause this was caused by a lone, man-eating wolf and would lead around 18 attacks, with at least four people perishing. Sheer brutality of this attack, as well as the short time frame within which it took place, makes this one of the most violent and harrowing cases of animal-human conflict in France's history. However, is it truly the case that this massacre really is the work of a lone wolf, or could there be another explanation for these attacks taking place? I wanted to start this video off by emphasizing that wolves usually are not dangerous towards people. It's almost always the case that they are far more scared of us than we are of them. However, there are times in history that saw a surge in wolves becoming brazenly aggressive towards humans, sometimes leading them to become full-on man-eaters. These spikes in attack numbers are seen during times of societal and economic hardship, such as after a major conflict or during a famine. The former was a major reason for France's economic struggles. After spending a wealth of resources fighting the intensive Seven Years' War and French and Indian War, the nation struggled to stay afloat. As people in the countryside became more reliant on wild game for sustenance, the wolves' main prey base started to dwindle. As a result, they resorted to more drastic measures, such as excavating grave sites and scavenging on human remains. This acclimates them to the taste of human flesh and, in turn, causes them to start seeing human beings as a potential source of easy prey. On the day of the attack, a wolf entered Septmont Parish on the prowl for its next meal. Immediately upon entry, it spotted its first victim, a pregnant woman. It lunged towards her and viciously gnawed and clawed at her, leaving her mortally wounded. Locals nearby rushed to the scene and, unable to save the critically injured woman in time, opted to extract her developing fetus from the womb to baptize it in order to save its soul. While they were doing that, just about 300 meters away, the man eater struck once more, attacking a woman and her son. They were able to successfully fend off the beast, and the wolf left the village. On March 1st, the attacks began once again. The wolf entered the commune of Corcel and started its day by attacking a man located within the commune. The aftermath of the attack left him with a few deep head wounds. Following that, two young boys on their way to Paris were ambushed by the wolf, both of which were unfortunately quite badly wounded. Afterwards, it stalked and then leapt towards a farmer on horseback, viciously tearing half of his face off before fleeing past a nearby mill. It then bounded towards the nearby commune of Bazouche, where, upon arrival, the bloodthirsty canine set its sights on a woman, maiming her to the point where she was partially decapitated. A young girl near the scene of the attack was spotted and then attacked by the wolf. Luckily, she was able to escape and get to safety, warning the other villagers about the presence of the murderous animal. Together, the villagers devised and set up an ambush next to the decapitated woman the following day. It didn't take long for the wolf to return to the site of the headless woman's body, where it was swiftly greeted by a group of four desperate villagers seeking to put an end to its reign of terror. Impressively and horrifically, the wolf was actually too much for them to handle. It was not until more villagers came to their aid that the wolf ran away from the scene, but not before getting into a scrap with a dog chained to a nearby post. It came across a few sheep, which were promptly torn to shreds. Spotting a nearby shed, its curiosity was piqued. Its investigation of the shed led it to discover the presence of a resting cow and a servant tending to the bovine. Likely not being satisfied by ripping apart mere sheep, it set its murderous gaze upon them, and then proceeded to ferociously rip them apart. The wolf's activities left a path of death and devastation in its wake, and people were terrified that it could strike at any time. Calls to action were made, and it needed to be put to an immediate halt. Only one man in the area had the capability of seeing that through, a man named Anton Savrel. A former member of the local militia, he set out for the wolf armed only with the pitchfork. It didn't take long before they crossed paths. It leapt at the militiamen, eyes flooded with murderous intent. Expecting as much from such a killer, he got ready, and then used his pitchfork to strike down onto the wolf, pinning it onto the ground. Though successfully able to restrain the wild animal, Savril wasn't equipped to put it down. He had to wait 15 agonizing minutes before he was able to flag someone down armed to kill the wolf. For his role in putting an end to the carnage carried out by the wolf, King Louis XV gave Savrel a reward of 300 livres. Finally, the beast's rampage has been stopped. News that came to the relief of many, I'm sure.
But as horrific as the story was, was the story of the Wolf of Sasan even a legitimate account of a wolf attack? The number of victims may seem exaggerated, but there were accounts of other wolves in the 17th and 18th century amassing similar body counts, most notably one particularly infamous man killer that operated around the same time. Although record keeping practices from the time may not be as robust as today's standards, as there was not much communication between parishes, when it came to matters such as these, they still provided a reasonable account of things such as causes of death. What questions the validity of this tale is the distances between the areas where there was a wolf attack in that time frame. Sosan, as previously mentioned, was located northeast of Paris. However, the two other areas that reported an attack by a wolf, Corcel and Bazoche, are a little over 250 kilometers away from Paris itself. Wolves do indeed travel considerable distances, but according to the Montana Fish and Wildlife Service, wolves usually only travel up to 30 kilometers a day. A far distance, but it would make traveling from Sosan to Corcel an impossibility. With that said, what did happen in those areas? Chances are that it may have been two different wolves that attacked people within that time frame. Another indicator of this are the victims in the attack. The first wolf targeted the two women and one child, while the wolf attacks in Corcel and Bazoche consisted of victims that also included men. These two factors lead me to believe that the Wolf of Sasan was not responsible for the attacks on the other two communes. It is abundantly clear that 18th century France was certainly no stranger to attacks by wolves. The isolation brought about from living in the sparsely populated countryside made humans an occasional target for wolves, but to see a case like this one, seeing such bloody carnage enacted by one or several different wolves is almost unheard of. In any case, I am sure that the people of France finally felt solace when they learned that the lone wolf that terrorized their towns were finally put out of commission. Thank you for making it to the end. Firstly, I am absolutely floored by the amount of attention and love that my Reddit video has received. Thank you all so, so much for showing your support. I have plans to do more disturbing internet related videos in the future, but I wanted to focus on a disturbing animal case in this video, since I do find situations or um, cases like these very interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and sharing this video. To stay up to date with my shenanigans, please do consider subscribing. Also. My apologies in advance if my audio isn't the best since my current place of residence doesn't make for a good recording studio. Thank you all for watching and do take care.